So it's just about 6.30. Um, I think on my computer I have 6.29, but it doesn't mean we can start. So I have some great participants here. Um, so again, just as a reminder, I can actually see you. So if you have questions, feel free to ask them in the chat or go to the q and I'm going to go through the presentation first um, and hope to answer questions at the end unless the question seems like it should be answered immediately. And then I might stop and answer that question. Or if the question pertains to the first part of the presentation, I might answer it at that point. So if you have questions, don't hesitate, put them in. I included my email at the end of the presentation. And I, you can always email me questions if it comes to you, you know, when you wake up tomorrow at 6 a.m., um, you can always just send me an email and I can answer as best I can. So just to say my name again, I'm Stephanie. I am an adult and digital services librarian at the library, and I am so glad that you joined me here on Zoom this evening. It's been a beautiful day, and I hope you're all doing well. We are going to talk about cutting the cord, ditching cable, and getting you onto some streaming services. It is a slightly overwhelming topic. You have a lot of choices, and choices are great, but sometimes choices can really get you frustrated. So I'm hoping I can help you kind of figure out how to research and what might work best for you. And it's 631. And so I'm going to get started. Let's go to our first slide. Let's see here. So hopefully it works. There we go. Okay, so making sense of cord cutting. So why do you cut the cord and how do you cut the cord? Um, so there are a number of reasons to cut the cord or ditch cable or satellite. And the biggest of which for everyone is generally saving money. Um, it also gives you more freedom to choose uh, the channels that you want, take your TV and movies wherever you go. And one of the best things is that it does help you get rid of lengthy years long contracts. 
Uh, the great thing about all of these services is that they are billed month to month. So you don't have to sign yourself to a two or three year contract. And if you decide you want to get out of it, pay a certain amount of money. There's none of that here. And that's what's really great. It gives you a lot more freedom. You, know, you can start one service and say, after three months, oh, this isn't really working for me. I'm going to try something else. And you can do that. You have that freedom. So how you cut the cord is completely your decision. Uh, the process can be a little complicated or confusing depending on uh, your uh, level of comfortability with technology and, and how tech savvy you might be. And even if you're not, you can still do it. Don't worry about that. Um, but it boils down to the following. You need good Wi-Fi, very good Wi-Fi, a streaming device or smart TV, and a streaming service or four or five. For example, a live TV streaming service and general streaming like Netflix. So cutting the cord, the good and the bad. Uh, there are really great positives to cutting the cord and, and going for one of these services, but you know, there are going to be downsides too. Uh, it can really simplify your life. It can save you money. It actually can streamline the way you view TV. You don't have as many cables. You don't have to pay monthly fees for a uh, cable box, which is also really great. But there's some downsides, like your internet connection. You have to make sure you have strong internet. Most of us probably are using Optimum. Uh, if you are living in the town of Brookhaven, you really don't have any other option. Um, so Optimum is probably your internet provider. And I think generally you're all kind of working with maybe 50 megabytes per second. And the megabytes per second, that is the speed of your internet. And 50 is kind of low, but it really gets the job done for a lot of people. With streaming services, you might need to go a little bit higher. You might have to pay a little extra for say 100 megabytes per second, but you might have to do that after you see how it's working for you. Uh, this kind of stuff does require a smart TV or a streaming device. A smart, a smart TV obviously is what it says it is, and that's pretty much the only kind of TV you're going to find now. Um, a streaming device is something like a Roku or an Amazon Fire TV. Those are probably the two biggest in the game. And there are limits on how many people can watch your live TV and even just your general streaming service at one time. So you can be in the same house and maybe there are five people in your household and there are four TVs, you might have to pay extra to have all four TVs having the service running at the same time. Another downside is not every channel is available from one service, especially regional sports channels or regional sports networks. They do cost a lot of money. They're highly local. So it can be a little bit difficult to get those. And a good example here is that MSG is only available on two live TV streaming services. And there are a lot of live TV streaming services out there. So it does limit your options if you are a huge Rangers or Knicks fan. There's no more numbers. And I think people forget about that. I know my parents did when they first made the switch. You, there's no two, four, five, and seven. It's you know, CBS, NBC, ABC, Fox. It's not, you know, there's no numbers that you have memorized. You have to go alphabetically to find the channel you're looking for. Um, choices, choices can be good. Choices can also be difficult. So you have to research before making a decision. Um, as a librarian, I take research very seriously. And there could be more good or bad, depending on which service you choose. So research, my favorite slide. Um, researching your options is so important. Um, and we put some links in the chat here, and those are the links that I have on this slide. So researching, it's one of the most important things you could do for yourself in this situation. So I have some tips for you. Um, so for live TV, write down your must see TV and the channels you watch regularly. So you can compare the services and see what might work best for you. It's really important, just sit down and say, okay, I watch all of these shows, they're on these channels, so I'm going to want these. And then th also think about how many shows do you DVR? How many hours does that equal? Will you need to pay extra so that you can record more shows? Uh, that is something to consider because some services limit you a little bit right off the bat with 
uh, how many hours of TV you can record. Some are unlimited, some only start you off with 30 and you have to pay more. Um, be aware of how many people are in your household. You probably already know how many people are in your household, but keep that at the back of your mind as you're researching. Will you need to pay for additional screens or do you want to go with a service that maybe gives you three and that might be all you need? How many devices do you use at one time? Do you need to pay for more internet? This ties into what I was saying earlier about having a strong connection. The more devices you have, the more internet you use. So if you are going to be running your streaming service, your fire stick, your mobile device, like your phone and tablet, a laptop, all of that, that's a lot of internet that you have to use. Another important factor here is create a budget. Make a budget for yourself so that you know where to draw the line on services. Uh, take a look at your optimum bill or your direct TV bill and see how much you're paying for TV and how much you're paying for internet and phone if you use a landline. So if you have, say, the optimum triple pay, play, it might have a different name, but that's what it used to be called, and you are in a really good contract, maybe right now it's not the time for you to switch. Um, but if you are only paying for internet and TV and the bundle is still very expensive, it might be financially uh, worthwhile for you to just pay for internet. And then use reputable websites like the ones I've listed here. And again, they are in the chat. So CNET is really great. Those are the two websites. That's uh, the two links I have there. I love CNET to kind of look into cord cutting news and streaming services news. One of the links I have actually compares each major service and their channel lineup so that you have this really nice grid and it's best viewed on a laptop or a desktop computer, just so that you know, you can do it on mobile, but it has this really great grid where it lists the channels and which service has that channel. So that can be really helpful for you in your budgeting and your planning. Um, other websites are Consumer Reports at the library has a free access to the Consumer Reports website. So even if you didn't know that or Cord cutting isn't for you, at least you get something else out of this. Um, with your library card and your PIN, you can go to our website, you have access to consumer reports and they sometimes do reviews on services like this. Engadget is another one of my favorite uh, websites for research about technology as well as The Verge, though they don't always focus on streaming services. So research, get that going. So, Live TV streaming versus Netflix, basically. <laughs> uh, there are other streaming services. It was just easier to, to write Netflix there in that headline. So before we get into all of your options, it's important to remember that there are two different ways to stream TV. You have streaming services with no live TV options and streaming services that have live TV channels. So examples for just streaming, no live TV, are Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, Hulu, Disney Plus, Apple TV, HBO Max, also right now HBO, it's called HBO Now, and Peacock, which is coming in July. Uh, that date could actually be pushed up, but it could also be pushed back. It's always hard to tell, especially in times like these. So those are just some of your, your just streaming options. There are more, but those are really the major players right now. Uh, and then some examples for live TV streaming. You have Hulu Live and Hulu, the separate streaming service comes with Hulu Live and I'll explain that later. YouTube TV owned by Google, AT&T TV Now. That's a lot to say. I will have to say it again later. It can turn into a tongue twister, so we'll see. Sling TV and Fubo TV. And those are live TV streaming services. So how do you even stream? <laughs> The, we all hear the word streaming probably on TV multiple times a day, but what is it? So streaming video can be as simple as loading up a browser and going to youtube.com to view an uploaded video. We've probably all been to youtube.com to look for something DIY or just watch something fun or amusing. Um, or it can be as complicated as purchasing Netflix and an Amazon Fire TV stick downloading an app to the Fire TV, registering your Netflix account, and then watching the provided content. So most likely you're looking for that second option. And this means you need a streaming device. 
So streaming devices just allow you to, as we like to say, stream content. Um, and so here are your best device options. There are others, they don't really work as well. These are sort of the, sort of the tried and true devices. So there's the Roku box or Roku stick, and that starts at about $30 and then is an upwards of $100 for 4K. 4K is probably a term you hear a lot now with TV. The majority of new TVs being sold are 4K. That's a resolution. It just means 4,000 pixels. Personally, I don't notice a huge difference. So if you're being upsold on a 4K TV and you really just want to buy regular HD 1080p, that's fine. You probably won't notice the difference. But if you have 4K, great. Maybe you'll see it. Maybe it'll be great for you. Uh, there is the Amazon Fire TV. That's $40 to $50 for the stick, depending on if you just do standard HD or 4K. And $80 for the Alexa-enabled TV Cube. That really is just a fancy Echo. So if you have the uh, Amazon Echo series, maybe that's something you're interested in. But the stick just does also work with Alexa and your Echo, so you really don't necessarily need the Cube. There's also an Apple TV, and this is really for Apple users only. If you are somebody who's really entrenched in the Apple sort of environment, you have a MacBook and an iPad and an iPhone, and you really just want to stick with Apple products, this might be a good option for you. It's $149 for HD, $179 to $199 for 4K. So you do have to pay a little bit. I know that they work very well. And I know that people who have their Apple TV really love their Apple TV. So it could be something that works for you as well. And then there's the smart TV. That's what I have behind me here. Uh, the prices range from $150 to the low thousands, depending on the size and the quality and the brand. Um, some issues with smart TVs, could be that the apps that are already on there don't always work. I actually have a slight issue with Hulu on my smart TV. My other services work fine. Hulu doesn't seem to be working properly, so I have to figure out something for that. In the end, I might have to buy a Fire TV stick. So these are things to think about. Always read reviews for whatever you're looking to purchase. Uh, that is going to be your best guide. And that's where CNET and Engadget come in handy. So I mentioned it before, I'm mentioning it again because I want you to be really well aware. You'll also need a strong, stable Wi-Fi connection. So a lot of places are going to tell you that 10 to 20 megabytes are it's going to be fine and get you what you need. It's really not going to work. Like I said, ideally, you might want 100 megabytes. If you don't, I think 50 could get you where you need to go unless you have a lot of people in your household or you have um, a lot of devices running, then you might need to get more. Okay, so we're done with the first portion, just kind of going over what your options are. So now we're going to focus on live TV. At the end, we'll focus on just general streaming services and that part doesn't take as long because there's a lot to go over with live TV. So I hope you're still with me and here we go. Okay. You know what, I'm going to answer this question now. We just got a question in the chat. Is there any special router or modem needed? So the modem you have is probably from Optimum directly. That modem is great. You could stick with it. In terms of routers, you do want a router that is going to allow you to have multiple devices running at the same time. So some routers only work well if you have five devices. Some allow up to 15 or 20. Um, some of, I, I don't want to go too much into promoting certain brands, but I will say TP-Link, Linksys, um, Netgear, I have a Netgear router personally, all work very well. Routers can get pricey, but the better quality you have, the better experience you're going to get with your internet. So some routers can't support a very high internet speed. So if you're someone that has 400 megabytes, you're going to want a slightly pricier router that can support that. And this is also where those reviews come in handy, where Consumer Reports and CNET come in handy. Um, but there's nothing special that you need. You just wanna make sure that what you have will work. And if you're on Optimum, your modem should be fine. 
you can speak to Optimum about whether your modem will work, but they're probably going to try to sell you another product. So be strong if they try to do that. I hope that answers your question. And you can always email me if you want to talk about it a little bit more in depth. Okay, so live TV streaming. Um, so I'm just focusing on the most relevant streaming services. Um, there are some others out there, but these are really the major players in the game. Um, and also a, an important note here is that the majority of these services and pretty much all of them actually can at this time only be used in one location unless you're using their mobile app. So when I say that, what I mean is you're going to have an app on your smart TV, on your Fire TV stick or your Roku where you will watch the TV shows on your TV, but then you can also download a mobile app for your tablet or your phone and watch them that way. If you do that option where you're using it on your mobile device, you can use it if you're traveling or if you're at work and you're taking a lunch break when we all hopefully get to go back to work and you can watch TV that way too. Um, but generally speaking, these services are only allowed in one location and that's to avoid account sharing, which happens frequently. You might be using right now somebody else's Netflix account. They haven't stopped it yet. So we'll see what happens as time goes on. Um, it's important to know that too. So the first two I have here are probably the two biggest services out there. They offer the most in my opinion. So there's Hulu with live TV. Hulu comes with uh, Hulu's main streaming service. So there's Hulu Live, and then there's just Hulu. It can get a little confusing. Uh, and I'll go into just Hulu streaming a little bit later, but basically Hulu with live TV obviously is live TV streaming, but it includes Hulu streaming, which includes Hulu's um, back catalog of different TV shows. It includes the movies and all of the other uh, streaming content that Hulu on its own has. So it's $55 for commercials with non-live TV and $60.99, which basically is $61, for no commercials with non-live TV. So when I say that, obviously with live TV, you're going to get commercials. It's just the nature of television. But if you are watching a show that aired you know, last night and you're watching it today, if you pay that $61, you won't have commercials. Um, unless you're using a recording, in which case you might have a commercial, but you should be able to forward through them. So you're paying an extra $5 to avoid the commercials if you're watching the show the next day. And that's one of the benefits of Hulu is that they offer TV shows the following day so that you can avoid the commercials if you choose to, or you can record the shows because not every show is offered that way. Um, so live TV will always have commercials. Um, there are 60 plus channels. I think there might be 65 now and you can pay extra for certain add-ons. With Hulu right now, you can watch two screens at a time, but you can pay extra for unlimited screens. I generally think it's $5, anywhere from five to 10 and you can bundle it with their DVR. So you get 50 hours of DVR, those are you know, digital video recordings to start but you can pay for 200 hours and they call that enhanced DVR. Enhanced DVR is also great because what it does is allow you to start something you're recording and forward through the commercials. And if you're like me, maybe you have very little patience for commercials. I'm that person that will start a show that started at eight o'clock. I'll record it at eight. I'll start it at 8.15 so I can forward through the commercials, <laughs> but that's just me. Um, you can create separate profiles for everyone in your household on Hulu, and a lot of these services offer that. Uh, that is a really great way for your family to personalize their experience with TV. And um, it's, it's really useful because you can favorite things, you can get um, recommendations based on your viewing, and it's always great to do profiles. And you can pay extra for um, premium channels. So that's HBO, Start, Showtime. Those are all considered premium. They have been for decades. They will probably continue to be uh, classified as premium channels. So that's Hulu with live TV. Uh, just full disclosure, I have Hulu with live TV uh, because I
had been subscribing to the Hulu streaming service for a little while and it just made sense for me and it had the majority of channels that I needed. Um, and with all of these live TV streaming services, I didn't uh, say this, but I should. When you go to their websites, you put in your zip code and it lets you know what local channels and what regional sports networks are available. In fact, I'm going to bring you to, if I can get it to work, Hulu right here. So this is Hulu with live TV. Hopefully you can all see it and you'll see channels right here. And right there, it says view channels in your area. So I'm just going to enter my zip code and it shows me my live local channels. All of your standard networks are there, including the Yes Network and SNY for uh, Yankees and Mets. And it gives you entertainment and lifestyle, what's available, movies, news, things like that. And you can do this for, um, for pretty much every single service. Okay, so I just got a question that I will answer. I'm not, I'm not going to wait until the end for this one. So Linda asked if you can choose to get optimum internet only. It's about $50 a month, but you can call for specific pricing. Yeah, so that's, uh, that is pretty much the answer to that question. Um, so sometimes that pricing will go up or down depending on your internet speed. Um, you could try to negotiate the price to go down, but um, it's, it's a little bit tricky. So you are paying for internet separately. So you're going to be using Optimum if you live in the town of Brookhaven. Like I said before, Verizon just isn't in here. Whether Brookhaven will ever let them in, I don't know. Um, so you still have to use Optimum. You're not, you're not getting internet from these services. It would be great if that were the case, but you still need Optimum. You still need good internet. So you are still paying Optimum. You're just not paying for their cable. So I get some people that have bills that are $200 because they've just been using Optimum for so long and their contracts just keep going up. So for them, they can go down and maybe they can get internet for $65 with taxes. And then they get a streaming service that maybe is $60 with taxes. So they are still saving, saving some money. Um, so it depends uh, where, where you're living. Um, and I think you're just gonna have to kind of figure out what's working best for you. And that's why I said to budget, to write down how much you're paying for Optimum right now, if you have bundled TV and internet and phone and conceivably how much you'd pay getting rid of that bundle. So that's important to go into your Optimum account, call them, see what they can do for you. Uh, they might say, okay, don't leave. We're gonna offer you this plan, but you'll have to figure out financially what works, but yes, you are still paying for internet. Okay, so I talked about, oh, hold on. Here we go. I talked about Hulu with live TV, and now we're going to talk about YouTube TV. So YouTube TV is owned by Google. There is youtube.com that I mentioned before, very well-known video sharing website, has a lot of great content on there. You can really go down the YouTube rabbit hole. I highly recommend it if you're bored uh, after two months being home. Um, so YouTube TV is $50 a month and it has about 70 channels. The one thing they don't have is Viacom channels. They don't have A&D, uh, Animal Planet, Nickelodeon. So that's what I mentioned before that not every service is going to have every single channel you're looking for. And that's why it's important to make a list of the shows you watch and what channels they're on and what channels you watch regularly. Um, YouTube TV has unlimited DVR right off the bat. I think that's awesome because a lot of the times you have to pay for a lot of DVR. You can have up to three streams at a time. So that's three different people watching on three different screens, not just two people watching on the same TV. It has many of the same channels as Hulu, but not all. Uh, like I mentioned before, Viacom channels, Hulu with live TV does have like A&E, Nickelodeon and Animal Planet. But right now, uh, YouTube TV doesn't. It might Occasionally, they might be able to get access to one of those channels if they work directly with the company and not with Viacom, who is the production company that owns that channel. It's very 
tricky business <laughs> on their research and understanding of the industry. Um, you can create six separate profiles on YouTube. Um, I think that's probably good for most households. And you can pay extra for those premium channels that I mentioned, as well as add-on packages. YouTube TV and other services have add-ons for sports, say like maybe you wanna pay for the NHL network or an NBA network or, or NFL network, which sometimes isn't offered. That might be an add-on that you pay for. So it's very similar to standard cable in that respect. Um, YouTube is really great for adding new channels. They do sometimes take them away, but I find that they've been adding more than they're taking away. Okay. So there are more, I'm gonna just keep going through here. Sling TV, you've probably seen the commercials talking about slinging sort of in the note of swinging. Um, Sling TV is a little bit unique in this game. They don't offer local channels or regional sports networks generally. So their packages are cheaper. It is more expensive to pay for regional networks and local networks. I'm not 100% sure why that works. I imagine it's just because the markets are more expensive. And so to go local, you have to pay a little bit more depending on where you are. Um, so Sling TV can be a little bit less expensive because it doesn't have to worry about those local channels. So maybe that's a good option for you. Maybe you don't watch network TV. And when I say local, I mean um, channel, you know, I'm, I'm saying local news, not necessarily CBS, but CBS 2 and NBC 4, ABC 7, those, because the numbers are different depending on where you live. So that's what I mean when I say local. So there's two separate packages at $30 uh, a month for each of those packages. They have Sling Orange and Sling Blue, and they have different channels and different focuses, but they can be bundled at $45 a month. Uh, Cloud DVR is at this point, I believe still an additional $5 a month. I haven't seen anything to the contrary. I've been struggling to find information on Sling's website. Sling's website used to be a little bit more obvious to find what you're looking for. I think they're starting to try to hide some of their costs. They're kind of playing that cable game, um, but it's not a terrible option. I actually know a few people who have Sling TV and are happy with, uh, with it. Like I said, very few local channels. Sling encourages users to purchase an antenna um, and I don't mean, you know, the little bunny ears sticking out of your TV. They are a little bit more high tech now, but not much. Um, you can get a lot of them on Amazon. Uh, a lot of times what happens is Sling will kind of bundle it with its service. So they'll send you a free, TV, uh, a free uh, antenna, or you can also choose a free Roku stick. So it's, it's something that they're giving their, their customers. But the antenna can sometimes go on the back of your TV now or go up on your wall. Problem with antenna, where we are on Long Island, we tend to pick up Connecticut channels and not New York channels. So I would say probably if you're in Nassau, Nassau, you're more likely to get like New York City channels, the channels that we might actually use for news. But here in Suffolk, in my experience, we can get New York channels, but we get a lot of Connecticut channels. And I think it's just based on distance and what the antenna can pick up. It's a lot of, lot of interference in this area. Um, Sling TV is available on all devices. Uh, I'm also wanted to mention Hulu and YouTube are also available on all devices. I didn't mention that. And you can have up to four streams at a time, which is one of the highest in the industry. And that's a nice thing. You don't have to pay extra to have your whole household uh, watching TV. So the next service is AT&T TV Now formerly Direct TV now. So Direct TV, if you don't know, is owned by uh, AT&T. Also a good point, Hulu is 61% owned by Disney. It's just something to think about if you care about things like that, who you're giving your money to. Generally, you're giving it to a big company regardless. Um, so AT&T TV now, formerly Direct TV now. Direct TV now, it folded because it wasn't good. Just going to be really honest. I did use it for a little bit. It didn't work properly. The channels kept being removed, then added, and they just, it wasn't a very stable, um, intuitive service. So they changed it to at and TV now. It is the most like cable, like any other service. 
there are a lot of packages and the packages can get expensive. It starts at $55 a month for 45 channels or $80 a month for 60 channels. HBO is included in that $80 package. So you're not paying extra for that, but you are paying a lot for 60 channels. No Viacom channels, a &E, Animal Planet, Nickelodeon just isn't in that service. It does have MSG. So if you're a Rangers or Knicks fan, maybe that's the way to go for you. Up to two streams at a time, $5 extra for three screens, 20 hours of DVR to start that deletes after 30 days. It is available on all devices. And you can go to the at and uh, TV website and look for your local channels. It's also important to note that there's another at and streaming service. It's $15 a month. It's called at and Watch TV. Uh, which has 35 channels and some of which is actually not included on AT&T TV now. Uh, local channels aren't included in that. And that is something for maybe someone who's looking for casual viewing, who's not really interested in network TV, something to think about. Okay, live TV, couple more. So we have Fubo TV. Fubo is very sports centric. This is for the sports enthusiast with one caveat being that there's no ESPN and I'll explain why in a moment. So Fubo TV is $55 a month and it's up from $45 that was last spring. Um, so, you know, within a year they went from 55 to 45. That happens, it happens everywhere. Sometimes the prices actually do come down. I have seen that, but it's rare. Uh, like I said, it's great for sports fans, but there's no ESPN. Their channel lineup is actually not bad, but there's no ABC, Disney, or ESPN. And that is because Disney owns ABC and ESPN. Disney owns the world. Um, so they don't have a contract with Disney. I know that they had tried to get a contract with Disney. I just think maybe it was too expensive for the service. So because they aren't contracted with Disney, there's no ABC and there's no ESPN and no Disney channels. So you get 30 hours of DVR for free with 500 hours costing an additional $10 a month with Fubo. It has all of the MSG channels. Any MSG channel you can imagine, Fubo has it. Uh, there's two screens at a time, but again, you can pay for more. No separate profiles, which I found really odd, and I'm hoping they change that, or maybe are about to, and it does work on all devices. So if I did try Fubo TV out. Um, what I do like about Fubo is it has a really great grid. It, you, when you look at their grid and you're going between channels, you do feel like you're watching classic TV, um, and it's really easy to see what's going on when. And a lot of streaming services starting, started to adapt what Fubo TV did, which is really nice. And then there's Philo or Philo TV. I'm never 100% sure how to pronounce it. I just go to Philo. I just, it's more natural for me to say. Philo is actually something that was created for college students as a way for them to get just basic casual TV. So it started off a little bit cheaper than this. I believe it started at $15, but they added more channels. So it's $20 for 58 channels. You actually get some decent ones in there. Uh, there's no local or sports channels. Again, really meant for college students who are probably living away from home anyway and keep up with the news on their phones and their laptops while they're in class, supposed to be taking notes. Um, you get three simultaneous streams and unlimited DVR that will save for up to 30 days. It's available on pretty much all of your major devices and is actually a really decent service for someone just looking for basic and is okay without having their local channels. One thing I wanted to mention with YouTube TV, there's no Yes Network. So if you're a Yankees fan, YouTube TV might not be for you, but Yes is available on all of the other streaming services. Yes Network used to be available on YouTube TV and I'm not really sure what happened there. It looks like they just didn't renew the contract. There's a lot of contract, a lot of negotiation with these services. Okay, so channels that are unavailable on just about any streaming service. PBS, it is available on YouTube TV, 13 and 21 are available now. That is the 
only streaming service that has PBS. It's public TV. It's difficult to get it on these services. Um, but PBS it has its own free app with a lot available to you. And for a small annual donation, you can access what's called PBS Passport, and it has a ton of content. I love PBS Passport. I give PBS uh, anywhere from $50 to $100 a year. I have access to PBS Passport and everything you can imagine. I think they even will give it to you if you pay $20 a year. You can give that a shot. So if you're a PBS lover, this might be a really good thing for you if you do cut the cord or even if you don't and you don't have access to it. Um, there was a new series on PBS uh, last year called Sanditon, and it was based on an unfinished Jane Austen novel. PBS Passport actually released all of the episodes in at once, so you could binge watch um, instead of showing it weekly. So if you, I had PBS Passport, so I watched it in about a weekend, and um, everyone else had to wait weekly. So there's some perks there. Also, the Weather Channel is not available on these streaming services, but you can download the app for free and get your weather. News 12 is only available to Optimum subscribers. If you have Optimum TV, you have News 12. If you don't have Optimum TV, you don't have News 12. You might still be able, in fact, you probably should still be able to access the News 12 website using your Optimum internet login, but I find that doesn't always work. Um, the CW, which is watched by myself, but also by a lot of uh, teens. It's a very popular teen network. Used to be the WB, uh, now it's the CW. It's available on YouTube TV, no other streaming service, but it, and, but it is actually the type of thing that has its own channel that you can download. You don't even have to have TV, you can just watch it. You just have to deal with commercials, but for free. Um, there are a couple of free options that are not really TV in the way that we know them. So these sorts of services are on your streaming devices and they have a lot of theme channels. So like buzzer for game shows. And I, when I say game shows, I mean classic game shows, 60s and 70s, my dad watches that channel a lot. Um, and TV shows from the 1960s and 1970s, like they have something called Antenna TV. And that is generally found on these two services called Pluto T TV and Tubi TV. They're free, you make an account, you watch whatever you want. Um, they do sometimes have decent movies. They might have like music themed or romance themed channels where you can watch even some pretty contemporary films or classic. Pluto TV has a channel called the Doctor Who channel. Anyone who knows me knows I'm a really big Doctor Who fan and they show all of the classic Doctor Who episodes from the 60s through the uh, end of the 80s. And so that's something I go to. Okay, so some special notes to live TV. Uh, another drawback here, some services don't allow you to forward or rewind during live TV, though they might allow this if you pay more. Like Hulu doesn't allow it unless you have enhanced DVR and then it's not an issue. Uh, some services are starting to offer this without paying more like YouTube TV, you're not paying more to rewind and forward. I think they're recognizing that their customers want this. So when researching services, you might wanna check reviews for this. Without using them, it's hard to say 100% which service allows it and which doesn't. And sometimes it just updates very quickly and it hasn't made it to the reviews yet. And every service is different. Every service will have its annoyances, like all technology. Technology is wonderful. I think we've learned that technology can be incredibly useful. Uh, the last two months we've relied on it so heavily. Um, but it can be frustrating. So be patient with the technology, be patient with yourself, and you just learn as you go, you do your best. It's really the only way to learn is just to, just to do. Um, but annoyances might include buffering, occasional freezing or downtime, and a learning curve for some users. Some of you are going to be fine. You're gonna be able to just jump right in, but you might have to just be patient with yourself, learn your new remote, learn your new grid system. Okay, I'm going to check for some questions. So John, what is the best service for home telephone? I don't have a landline. Um, I'll be honest with you. I just use my cell phone. Some people do use Optimum. There is a free TV service and, or a free uh, phone service. Let's see. Let me just get the name for it. 
Um, I know it was a low cost service. I'm gonna think on it and I will come back to you. It wasn't Magic Jack, but Magic Jack is a good option as well. It was a $4 a month um, Wi-Fi based service. So again, this is something that is based on internet. If you have internet, it's going to work. If you don't have internet, it won't work. But Magic Jack is a good option as well. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, I wanna say it was something with an M and I, I, it's not Magic Jack, but it's similar and I will probably get to that. My brain will remember it probably at the end. So John, if you bear with me, I can try to get you a name or um, again, I'll have my email. You can email me and we can see what, if we can find something for you. But um, finding telephone service for home can be a little bit tricky. Uh, most people stick with Optimum. There are some other options out there, but whether they're cheaper, I couldn't say. I know some people pay $10 a month to Optimum if you wanna keep your landline. Otherwise you can use your cell phone. Okay. So streaming services, we went over live TV. Uh, you might find you don't want live TV at all, and maybe you just want to rely on a basic streaming service and DVDs from your library whenever we are able to safely open, because um, DVDs are still useful. They're still, they're still working. So in addition to live TV streaming, you can purchase uh, subscriptions to services that don't offer live TV. They provide movies, TV, and also some really great original content for a generally low monthly price and few or no commercials. Um, included in these services can be premium channels like HBO and Showtime. So the big three, as I call them, Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, and Hulu. So Netflix is $9 for basic or one screen viewing at a time. So one person on one TV, $13 for standard with two people watching at one time and then $16 for premium, which is four people watching at one time. Now, sometimes with Netflix, if you're in the same house and there's three people watching, it might not stop you because it's not necessarily recognizing that it's on a different uh, device. Like if you have two Amazon Fire TVs, it might not be able to tell the difference, but it might be able to tell if you're on a smart TV and a Fire TV in the same house. Sometimes you can get around that limit. Netflix has come very far. If you know the history of Netflix, it started in the early 2000s, very early 2000s with DVDs. It was just DVDs that got mailed to you, you mailed back, and now they've become this sort of huge, gigantic uh, company that really, really changed the way we watch TV. All of this is really coming from what Netflix was able to build. Um, so there's, it's, it's come a long way. <laughs> Amazon Prime Video, it comes with Amazon Prime. So if you pay that $120 a year for Amazon Prime, you have Prime Video, you're paying for it, you should just use it. There's some really, really good stuff on there. But if you just want the video, it's $13 a month or $119 a year for Prime, $9 a month just for Prime Video. Hulu, just the streaming service, not live, is $6 a month for commercials and $12 a month for no commercials. So if you don't mind commercials, you might just wanna pay that $6 a month. So what I was saying about Hulu before, um, Hulu is a good streaming service because it gives you TV shows the next day, the day after, generally the day after they've aired at 5 a.m. So you can go to bed at 10 o'clock at night, wake up at 6 a.m. and watch the show that was on at 10 o'clock as you were going to sleep. So that's an option for you. Hulu doesn't have access to every single TV show the next day. A lot of the cable channels, um, I'm thinking like TV Land and TBS and like the originals that are on cable, they might not show up right away. You might have to wait until the season ends and then usually a month or two afterwards, they show up on Hulu and you can just watch the whole season. Um, but a lot of the shows, especially on the major networks do have their shows show up on Hulu the day after they're, they're aired. So you might be able to skip live TV and rely on an antenna if you wanna watch, you know, uh, award shows or other events like that. And there are a lot of commercials for Hulu with commercials, by the way. So it's up to you if you wanna pay for it. 
You can also add other channels to Hulu and Amazon Prime Video, like um, CBS All Access, which I'll talk about. So CBS doesn't allow most of their shows to be shown the next day on Hulu. You have to wait until the end of the season. Uh, they really prefer that you purchase their own streaming service, which I'm going to get to now. So in addition to the big three, there's premium and other channels. So there's HBO Now, which will soon become, as of next week, in, let's say, where are we looking, like six days, um, HBO Max. And that's $15 a month for HBO Now. It should stay HBO Max when it does, you know, when it does change over, or you can have both, but I wouldn't do that. Uh, Showtime, just Showtime is $11 a month. Stars Direct, which has Outlander, if you're an Outlander fan, it's $9 a month. And then there's CBS All Access. It's $6 a month, $10 for no commercials. It's all CBS shows, I think even some of their past shows and some original content. So there's a spinoff of The Good Wife called The Good Fight. And that is shown on um, CBS All Access and only CBS All Access. So like I said before, CBS doesn't have their shows immediately show up on Hulu. You can purchase CBS All Access for an additional $10 and add it to your Hulu subscription. And then maybe that's all you need for TV. Something to think about. Um, other channels, because there are a lot of streaming services. So I tried to fit it all in this little box. Um, Disney Plus, it is $6 a month or $70 annually and it's featuring old and new Disney movies and some original content as well. It's $12 a month for this bundle. It's Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus. It's not a bad deal. Um, again, like I said, Disney owns the world, so they own Hulu, they, they own ESPN, they own ABC, so you get a lot there. Um, so maybe that's not the worst bundle in the world for you to do something like that with Disney. Right now, that's what they're offering, $12, $12 a month for all three of those channels. There's Apple TV Plus, which right now is $5 a month. Uh, there's a lot of original content. Uh, not everyone remembers that Apple TV Plus exists. It was supposed to be the big new streaming service last year. It launched very well with the Reese Witherspoon and Jennifer Aniston show, and then it sort of gently kind of died down. But for $5 a month, if you're interested in a couple of big names and TV shows, you know, maybe you want to give it a shot. HBO Max is coming out on May 27th. That's next week. It's insane that it's almost June. Um, it is HBO and Warner Media content. And there's a lot more there. It is going to be a, a huge service, I think. But then again, it, Apple TV Plus was supposed to be a huge service. Um, so HBO Now subscribers will get HBO Max for $15. And right now, if you pre-order what they're calling pre-order HBO Max, you can get it for $13 a month for one year, and then it'll be $15 a month. Um, HBO Max will include all HBO content that you would expect regularly, but it will also have a lot of other things. I know Friends is going to be on there. Doctor Who is going to be on there if you're a Doctor Who fan. Can't help it, have to mention it. And a lot of other things. I know there's a lot of really great classic film that are going to be coming. So I'm really curious to see how this one does. And then I mentioned Peacock earlier. Peacock is NBC's own streaming service. Uh, they don't necessarily have pricing right now. I don't think it's going to be terribly expensive and that should be launching on July 15th and we'll get more information for that as we go. So <laughs> let's see, where else, what else can I say? Oh, one thing about HBO Max. So if you do have a Fire TV stick or you're planning to get a Fire TV stick and you're planning to get HBO Max, at this time, you will not be able to get HBO Max on your Fire stick. Uh, there's always really strong negotiations and clashes between these really large companies. And HBO, I'm fairly certain, is owned by AT&T. It all cycles back. There's usually just a few companies at the top. So I'm pretty sure AT&T owns HBO and they are offering HBO Max for free for some of their AT&T users. So if you use AT&T for your phone, if that's your carrier for your phone, you might wanna see if you can get HBO Max for free. You might be able to. Um, 
So I don't know how, what the negotiations are like between AT&T and Amazon, but there's companies are always butting heads with Amazon, basically. Um, you want to talk about a big company. Uh, YouTube TV wasn't on Amazon for a very long time because Google and Amazon do not get along. They don't play well together. And it took a very long time to get YouTube TV on the Fire TV stick. And Amazon finally gave in. Google finally gave in. And as of last year, and only last year, could you have YouTube TV on a Fire stick? So when you're looking at these services, when you're thinking about TV, even on cable, there's so much going on behind the scenes. And it's a lot to keep up with. OK, so I'm going to just pause here and take a look at the chat. And let's see what's happening. So Kathleen, Hulu, no commercials. Uh, yes. So as far as I know, it's Hulu with no commercials, but I am actually going to double check that for you before I go a little bit more in depth to some of these services. Okay, let me pull that up. So let's see what Disney Plus has to tell me. Oh, and by the way, Disney owns Marvel and Star Wars, if you didn't know that. So you get all of the Star Wars, all of the Marvel movies. So let's see, I'm gonna click on get all three. And of course I have to put in my email. <laughs> um, there should be fine print and that's part of the problem is there isn't always fine print there. Ad supported, so right there. So it is Hulu with commercials. So really all you're doing is paying the same price for Hulu and the same price for Disney Plus, but you're basically getting ESPN Plus for free. So if you are a sports fan, maybe this is a good bundle or, or your family are sports fans, this could be a good bundle for you, but you're essentially getting ESPN Plus for free. Okay. So I'm just going to briefly tell you about the big three streaming services that I mentioned. Um, Netflix has a lot of movies, a lot of TV and documentaries, um, as well as a lot of comedy specials. YouTube, uh, I'm sorry, Netflix has a lot of great comedy specials. Their stand-up line is phenomenal. So if you're a fan of stand-up comedy, Netflix is great. If you have Netflix already and you're not watching the stand-up content, I highly recommend it if you need to laugh. Uh, John Mulaney is my favorite. Um, they also have a ton of original content. They really, like I said before, Netflix kind of changed the game. I have my issues with Netflix, but I respect what they've done for TV, um, especially streaming TV and making it a little bit more accessible. Uh, prices occasionally increase, but generally only by a dollar to $2. Recently, the prices have increased a little bit more. I think production companies are just charging more and making it a little more difficult for Netflix to pay for these, uh, for the content. But for a long time, Netflix never raised its prices, but it happens occasionally. Uh, current seasons of TV shows usually don't show up until several months after they've aired, with the exception of, I think recently it started to change. So for example, Grey's Anatomy, the most recent season just came on a few weeks ago and the show ended, and I wanna say in early April, but Time has been an interesting concept to me lately, and I'm sure you're all feeling the same. I generally don't know what day it is. So this could have happened. Grey's Anatomy could have ended you know, a month or more ago, and, and I, I'm not gonna remember. <laughs> um, so their movie selection, it used to be better. There used to be a ton of great movies on Netflix. It's still pretty good, but it's definitely not as strong as it used to be. And that really does come down to production. Netflix is focusing more on original content but their original content is really great. One of my favorite shows on Netflix that I tell everybody about is Grace and Frankie. Um, it has Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin, uh, Martin Sheen and Sam Watterson, and they are amazing, amazing. So if you have Netflix or know someone who does, um, I recommend giving that TV series a watch. It's really funny, really well acted, of course. Um, and there's no HBO stars or Showtime. You would have to pay for that separately. Amazon Prime Video, it's movies, TV, documentaries, fitness, original content, great kid content too. It's bundled into Amazon Prime. So if you're paying for Prime already, you already have Prime Video and just go for it. 
one of my absolute favorite TV, uh, TV series of all time. It's kind of on behind me on my TV. I was telling my colleague before is The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, three seasons and one of the best things I've ever watched on TV. So if you have Amazon Prime, watch the show. It's so good. The clothes alone are worth the watch. Um, prices for Amazon Prime, it doesn't really go up. Uh, it's been at 120 for a few years now. Hopefully it won't go up again because it is getting expensive. <laughs> it has a really good selection of movies and TV. Again, could be better. Things drop off quickly. I think Legally Blonde was on Amazon Prime for about a month and that's one of my favorite movies I'm showing my age. Um, and it was on for a month and then it was off and it happens. Um, you can add HBO Star, Showtime and CBS All Access to your Amazon Prime video selection. That's an option then you can keep all your channels on uh, in one spot. Uh, Hulu, as I mentioned before, it's perfect for TV lovers. And if you don't wanna pay for live TV, if you don't mind missing the big events, the Super Bowl or award shows, then you know maybe you can ditch live TV altogether and rely on Hulu. Or you take Hulu and say, Philo TV or AT&T Watch TV, uh, again, difficult to say, but maybe that works for you. That $15 and $12 could be something that works for you. And an antenna, if you want to give that a try, but I'm not always 100% for sure, how, uh, percent sure how well those work. It does have a great catalog of new and old TV, Hulu does. Uh, all of MASH is there. That's 20 years of one of the greatest shows probably uh, we've ever seen. Uh, it has a decent movie selection as well. I'm always surprised by the movies I can watch on Hulu. So uh, something to think about and you can add HBO stars and Showtime to your subscription. So that's the big three. Um, and I am almost done with this presentation. <laughs> I would be remiss if I didn't talk about library streaming services. We have three streaming services that you get for free with your library card right now. You need your card number, you need your four digit pin, and you have access to these streaming services. They're not as fancy as Netflix or Amazon Prime, but they're good. Um, the first one is Canopy with a K. Um, so Canopy has documentaries, foreign films, indies, a lot of classic. They have the Criterion collection, are a lot of the Criterion with a, a strong focus on uh, foreign films. So if you are a film buff, Canopy is a really great option. You can stream up to 10 movies a month on Canopy. Um, that doesn't include Canopy Kids. So they have an awesome kids selection that doesn't count towards your streams, which is really great. They have a lot of the PBS kids stuff like Arthur and some Sesame Street. Um, you know, they have Mo Willems shows as well. So if you have kids in the house still and you will for months, um, if you have grandkids in the house, Canopy is really great. It's completely free. It's unlimited for Canopy kids. You just turn it on and let them watch to their heart's content. Hoopla, you might've heard about Hoopla from music or eBooks or audiobooks, but they have movies, um, lots of great indies, some TV shows and some great BBC titles as well. And they're usually always adding in those BBC titles. You can stream up to 15 titles a month. If you stream TV shows with Hoopla, each episode does count towards your 15, but it resets at 12.01, the first of the month. So you can start your binge watch, you know, on the 28th or the 29th, and you have, you can continue it, um, you know, the first of each month at 12 o'clock. Uh, Hoopla is really great for um, graphic novels as well, um, as well as audiobooks. They have a really great selection of both of those things if you have uh, an audiobook lover or a graphic novel lover as well. RB Digital brings you Acorn TV, which is a British streaming service, and it's free with your RB Digital account. You get unlimited access to it for seven days, then you return it and you borrow it again. You can put the Acorn TV app on your uh, streaming device and you can just watch as much British television as you want. It doesn't include everything, but Acorn TV is really good for those like cozy British mysteries, um, Miss Fisher, things like that. I think uh, there's Murdoch mysteries. Uh, there's a bunch on there. And you can visit this link, mcplibrary.org slash e downloads 
And that will kind of explain, give you instructions for some of this and give you more information on each of the services. Or you can set up a book a librarian appointment with me. Um, right now we are doing some virtual book a librarian appointments. Uh, we, I don't know how much I can help you with virtually for some of these services, but certainly we can try. Uh, and then when the library again is safe to reopen and, and you know, it might take a little bit of time you know, when we get back to a little bit of our new normal, certainly we can try to meet in person. But for now, you can email me with questions that you have. I'll do my best to answer. Uh, okay, so I have final thoughts. My first bullet is of course going to be research, research, research. Uh, it is so important to make an educated choice for you. Uh, know what you want and make sure you're getting the most for your money. Uh, do that comparison, take a little bit of time to figure out if this is a viable solution for you. Maybe you've spent the hour with me and maybe hopefully laughed a couple of times and just took your mind off some things and find out this isn't good for you and you're gonna stick with Optimum or Fios if you happen to have it. Um, but Maybe this is something that could work for you. So remember that this is a growing technology. This is a, these are growing services. So there might be buffering, there will be changes, more services will become available. Uh, this is a very, very dynamic kind of market right now. Uh, so many channels are trying to get into the streaming services game. Like I said, NBC has Peacock coming out. I'm sure there will be more coming out with some of the big channels. ABC doesn't have anything yet. I don't see them doing it. I don't think they have enough content, but NBC certainly does. Um, interesting fact, Friends will be on HBO Max and not Peacock as far as I know, even though it was on NBC, but that is just based on who produced Friends. So you're going to find certain things on certain services. Um, I do have an issue with the inaccessibility of some of these services. I wish that things were a little bit more broad. That might change based on consumer demand. So it's all growing, it's all changing. And that's something to keep in the back of your mind if you're doing this, if you're really gonna go for it, that things are gonna change. They could get better, they could get worse. We just don't know. Um, try to stay updated on these services as much as you can, even if it's just visiting CNET once a month. You don't want to miss out on price increases or plan and package changes. Now, I would hope that these services and the companies would email you if there were price changes, and I think generally they do. Uh, but sometimes they don't email you if they're removing channels. You have to try and do that work on your own. A little tip for you when you're Googling, um, because really kind of just Google, if you Google AT&T TV now or if you Google YouTube TV, when, you, when you're on Google, there's a little section called news. And what that will do is give you the most recent news stories on whatever you're searching for. And you can use this at any point, but I find that a very useful tool. I, you know, I'll Google a service and I'll be able to figure it out from there, you know, what the most recent news is. And it just helps me uh, learn any sort of changes that are coming. I also get news alerts for this kind of stuff. I can't explain to you why, but I, I find it very interesting. Um, so let's see, are there any other questions I didn't answer? We had that phone question and I still, it did not come back to me. So I am going to just bear with me. I'm going to do a quick Google search myself, um, on my phone. Okay. So let's see if I can find it. I probably can't. I probably should have texted my father because he would know. So they're going to have a little bit of quiet while I try to find this. It's not straight talk. They might have folded actually. Sometimes that happens. Here it is. It's Uma. So I'm going to type it into the chat. Again, this is Wi Fi based. So, John, to your question, um, it is low cost. Uh, so it is Uma. So let's see. But it is Wi-Fi based. So if your internet goes out, so does your phone. But you still have your cell phone and generally most people have a little bit of data that they can use. Um, and there are cell towers everywhere. So 
I think that that's everything. Um, if anyone has any final questions, you know, feel free to ask them now or again, send me that email. Oh, there is one more thing here on my slide, something to really help you. If you do go into streaming, even if you just go for Netflix and Hulu or Amazon, there is a really great app called Just Watch, all one word, and you download it to your smartphone or your tablet and you don't have to make an account, it's completely free. What you do is select the services that you pay for. So Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, and they even actually include the library services. So Hoopla and Canopy are on there as well. And you select those, service, those services. And if you search for a TV show or a movie, it tells you which streaming services they're, they're available on if they are. And that is a really useful thing um, because it can be overwhelming trying to search for all of these different movies and TV shows on these services. And it also will show you what's new on those services. So if you go onto the app, you'll be able to see anything new that just landed on those services. Another option is gowatchit.com. Pretty much does the same thing. You select your services and you can find out what's available. So just, just a little life hack for you there. Um, I really, I use Just Watch probably once a week. It is good. Um, and Netflix as well also releases a list of everything that's coming and going. So for example, Mad Men, I believe is leaving us in Netflix in June, which is really sad. I love that show, but Clueless, the movie is coming on June 1st onto Netflix. So I know what I'm doing on June 1st. Uh, so there's a lot, everything changes, content gets removed and added. Um, I know that this is all probably very overwhelming for you, but I hope that it's been useful. And again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. If you need me to slow down and explain something to you, maybe we can set up virtual Zoom and we can just go from there. So I thank you all for attending. Um, I don't see any more questions coming up. So I just wish you